General practice in laboratory is that you shouldn't be touching hot things with your hands. It hurts. It burns. Then it gets ugly because then we have to go to the nurse and do all those kind of extra paperwork. Not to mention it's just not safe and I'm more interested in your safety than the paperwork, trust me. But here we go. Let's be smart about what we're doing. In drawer number one, you have a series of um, tongs or gripping devices. For instance, the first one we have is called a crucible tong. You might be asking, well, why is it a crucible tong, Mr. Wellman? Well, the reason is is because it's designed for grabbing crucibles. That's the primary purpose, but don't be afraid that just, but Mr. Wellman, I'm not grabbing a crucible. You can still use it for a lot of other things, but be sure this is how it gets its name, and you should associate that's the primary use, but you can use it in other ways too. So, for instance, let me demonstrate. If you're doing a crucible, there's two different ways you can grab it. You could grab it from the end and grab it on the side, that's one way, but if you notice this little edge area out in the middle, that's actually designed to be able to come underneath it and be able to grab it like that and be relatively stable. So this is a crucible tong, distinguished by the little ends there and the spot in the middle. Now, the other ones that are very common are the beaker tongs. The beaker tongs, notice, that has a wider one and typically will have some rubber grips on it. They are great for holding onto beakers, hence the name beaker tongue. Hopefully you're seeing a the pattern. There's really not a whole lot of creativity when uh, chemistry teachers or the chemist named the particular tongs. They were designed for a specific purpose in mind. Sounds like engineering to me. So in this one, the next one over here is something called, you notice it's a little bit different, it's called a flask tongue. The flask tongue you can see is smaller because flasks have narrow necks. So either one of these two are considered flasks. That's an Erlenmeyer, that's a Florence flask. So with these, they're, they're great. They come in here and they, oh, get a great stable thing. You can shake it. You can do all kinds of things. That's perfectly designed for that. And then the last one is a test tube clamp. Now, the tricky thing about these is just realize that you open it by pushing it, and then you grab it like this. Now, here's the, the thing about using a test tube uh, clamp is normally when you grip something it gets tighter but notice this is the design that, that actually lets go so you have to be careful when you actually hold on to a test tube you hold it back here not tempted to squeeze it because if you squeeze it boop, it drops and again it's a mess liquids go everywhere you got stuff to clean up it breaks it's just not good so be sure you learn the proper way to hold on to a test tube now let's just go back and make sure we're using common sense for instance let's say I have a small beaker and go, Mr. Wallman, I have to use the beaker tongs only. Well, not really. These beakers were designed for probably about a 200 or at least 150 milliliter beaker and above. But this case, you get this little puppy here. Notice it doesn't really grip it. So on the very small one, hey, that looks a lot similar to the neck of a flask. So it's fine to go ahead and use a flask tong for these small ones. The point is, is you want to make sure you get the right holding device for the right item. The other things can be kind of dangerous though. If you're trying to use, for instance, one of these to grab something like this, it just doesn't, it's not really safe there, it can kind of fall. Notice it's not very stable. So, rule of the road is be sure to pick the appropriate tong for the appropriate glass where they're picking up. You can use it for other things, but just be sure that you have a reason for doing it. For instance, if it's really narrow, you can hold it with this. Make sure you get these names down because in lab, we may ask you, hey, make sure you have a flask tong out uh, anytime you have a flask, it's on the hot plate, for instance, or a beaker tong if you're dealing with hot beakers.